Hey, raindrops. Yes, the woman of everyone's dreams. Y'all have been asking about her, wanting to hear from her. She is my girl. She is y'all fave. And she just so happens to be somebody who said to me, I want to say a year ago or closer to that, that she was checking out a Potomac and she wanted the show to be centered around Candace Dillard Bassett. So we have a lot to catch up on. Give it up for my beautiful, gorgeous, honey friend, Jasmine Henley Brown. Hello, Carlos, Blake, Jones, ah! Raphael, Povich, Springer. <laughs> not not of course, Povich. Winfrey Walters. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> you are the father. Yes. Listen, I am the pod father. Yes, honey. <laughs> there, there is somebody who calls himself the pod father who's going to kick your ass for saying I know. that. I'm not going to say his name, though, because I, I heard he can be litigious. Okay. Really? Well, I don't want no smoke you, with him. Oh my God. That's why I'm not saying I'm not saying who it is. I'm not saying who it is. Well, it's funny. I posted a selfie once and said the pa father. And the girl said, that's so and so's name. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, fine. Like I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll stick with the king of reality television, honey. Let me let me not add That's a more. better fit anyway. I don't want to add more to my play, but the raindrops have been requesting you. Uh a few oh. of them tagged you recently. Have you been feeling yeah. the love? That they're like, bring Jasmine back. I always feel the love. I feel like you have one of the best, uh, like, fan bases. The raindrops, they're so supportive. They've always always been really, really nice. There have been a couple of shady comments here and there, but the good definitely outweighs the bad. And, you know, I'll pay a bitch dust in a second. So I'm always, you know, I'm always show love back. I ain't never too ill to not show love back. <laughs> I have missed you so much. So I'm happy. I miss you. Listen, it's fun because I'm like, I get to talk to my girl and have her on the podcast and Kiki and what better job can a brother ask for? So we We're have talking, to- We will talk about it anyway, so- <laughs> Yeah, and so let's give the people what they want. And we're all wearing black because we're mourning um, Candace Diller Bassett. I don't have a- My triangle isn't prepared. Dang it. Oh, sorry, girl. Sorry, Candace. Sorry, Candid. <laughs> so look, you once said to me that you felt that the show should be centered around Candace. And the way we all know where we were when OJ Simpson had the Bronco being chased by the police. Rest in peace. R.I.P. We all know where we were when OJ had the Bronco. We know where we were when the verdict of OJ came down. We know where we were when we found out Kyle and Mauricio were separated. We know where we were when we realized we can never buy a white refrigerator. <laughs> After Nene Leak said... <laughs> white refrigerator should spook her ass because she single-handedly ruined everything. Like, if I walk into a place with a white refrigerator, oh no, honey, what is what is this? No, can I tell you something? I may be going shopping for like an apartment that I need someplace. And mm -hmm. if they have a white refrigerator, I am leaving. If they have a white refrigerator and you like everything else, put in the lease agreement, change that mother refrigerator before I move in this. Well, thank you. I'll keep you updated. So where <laughs> were you when you learned that Candace Diller Bassett was leaving the show? Uh, I think I was lying in my bed and I was... <laughs> I was I was resting because I'm getting a lot of rest these days. Um, I wasn't doing I wasn't doing much, but I remember being so shocked. Like, this is she's leaving, but I was happy when I read it and saw that she was leaving on her own. Like, she made the choice to leave. She was not fired because I was going to have a lot of questions if they were letting Candace go. But I'm actually happy Candace made the decision to leave, especially with the news that that followed about the expansion of her family. So I am sad to see her go because I really think if we're talking about a future of Potomac in the show, she fits that bill. But after watching the, the parts, the three parts of the reunion, Candace does not have a friend on that cast. 
she does not have one friend on that cast. And that's not an environment that you want to be in when you're pregnant and bringing new life into this world. So good on you, Candy. So you, I said it. She doesn't have a friend. I know. But I, I, honey, let's let's dive right into it. So you watch all three parts reunion only because you knew I was going to talk to you. So before we get into the questionable friends that Candace doesn't have, um, in, in terms of what you think she doesn't have. How checked out were you this past season? The Austin episode. It was the Austin episode. It was, I watched it. I remember Me too. Making a video. Yes. I remember making a video. I. It might have been the episode prior. It went viral, by the way. <laughs> I don't even know what viral means at this point, but yeah, I'll take it. I will take it. I will take it. I made a, I made a video about how uncomfortable it was to watch them just kind of ice Candace out and just be not cohesive as a group it was really hard to watch so I remember watching that and I remember the Austin trip happened and I'm like that's a trip that I could call my friends up and we could take on a Wednesday I watch these shows because of the aspirational lifestyles because of the opulence the wealth right I watch this to get a peek into people's lifestyles that I'm not familiar with and that was something that I could just do on a regular day and so I just felt like when you add that to just the way that the cast feels, like the vibe, the negativity, um, with you know, paired with the 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 trips that are just very subpar, I was like, okay, I don't think this is for me. I think they've officially lost the plot. They've officially lost the plot. Mm. Why did you Why did you decide to check out at that time? It's so funny because um, I want the raindrops to know she and I did not talk about this beforehand because we like to give it to you guys. Raw. We never do. Pause. But we like to give it to you. <laughs> I want to say un unpause because for uh, them thirst traps we be posting. Oh! <laughs> let's just say we're gonna uh, press play on that. Let's just say milk does a body good, honey. <laughs> I know that's be, right. Be it as it may. No, I I think it's hilarious that you and I both stopped watching this season during the Austin trip and it's indicative of the similarities that the audience feels is sort of the breaking point that we all had at the same time because you and I are not alone in that I think the reason why a large percentage of people did check out of the show is because look we know at the end of the day these people aren't real friends the, mm -hmm. the the conceit of, no, we're real friends. We like hang out off camera. We know that's not the case. And look, I have shows where some of these people do not hang out um, off camera. And, and, and so that's not even the case because we still watch. We loved Atlanta Housewives when we knew that some of y'all don't really hang out with each other. But what made our favorite shows the favorite is because at least they all clocked in and said, look, while we're a part of this institution for three to four months, let's do our best to figure things out. And I think for us, it was sort of like, you guys don't like each other. You guys do not want to be around each other. The isolation and the ostracization of Candace bothered me. And, and, I, and, and it bothered me in a way where, listen, we all or know someone who felt isolated when we were in school sure. you know if you had a parent that transferred you to different schools that's tough I was somebody who moved I went to like three elementary schools right mm -hmm. and I, I I just remember always feeling alone like people aren't really messing with me because I'm the new kid on the block and I felt that Candace represented that person that that child in all of us who had that experience and I just felt it was like I don't want to watch a show where this one woman is being isolated and she's around a bunch of women who don't see it for her. And when it comes to her friends, I always thought Wendy was her friend in real life. Do you not think that Wendy is Candace's real friend? I don't think so. No, I don't think that's her enemy. I don't think she's her op or anything like that. I just feel like they have a friendship of convenience, like a Giselle, uh, um, Giselle. Garcelle and Sutton, right? Um, Beverly Hills, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I think Wendy and Candace both 
don't feel super welcome within the group. And so it makes them being friends feel like the the best fit. Um, and yeah, that's that's why I say like Candace doesn't have a friend um, on the show. And I think you're right too. Like I, I was watching the reunion and like watching Candace cry kind of like, she she cries a lot, right? And I feel like I'm I'm a very sensitive woman myself, so I cry often. But I was feeling like, man, I think Candace is crying and she's so sensitive with this group because it's like she can't do anything really like right with them. Right. And it's like yep. I don't see her overtly trying to prove herself as, you know, good enough or to be accepted. I don't think that's how Candace is. But I do think Candace does have all of the components that should be well accepted and she's just not and I think that really does bother her but that's also why I say girl you're pregnant you're about to have your baby you don't need to be around a group of people who are making you feel the way that these women seem to make you feel on a a day-to-day basis just be done with it but I do I agree with you I think Candace just feels super ostracized from the group she doesn't feel accepted and I think she does you know we all want to be accepted like yes it's, it's no shade when i say that we all want to be accepted yeah. especially when you're in a group like this on a reality tv show you want to be well received and well liked one of my raindrops said to me and i would love to get your point of view on this because i do think he has a good point um hi Jonel on twitter he goes he i call him mr gobadia bryant um uh, <laughs> <laughs> cuz he is a giselle stan and a Porsche stand. So hi, Jonelle. I love him. <laughs> um, he likes you too, by the way. He, oh, hi. No, he does. He said on, on Twitter, and I was like, this is very interesting. And I would love to get your point of view. He said that with Giselle being the queen bee of the show, that if we want to break it down, Wendy and Candace want Giselle to like them. And the struggles in the beginning was what you said. We all want to be accepted. It's, it's just, it's, it's human nature. And, and there's not one mm-hmm. person in this world who has never felt that way. You may not feel that way as much getting older, but in every scenario that you're in, one of those you want to feel accepted. He mm-hmm. said that the girls want Giselle to accept them. And he said that when you, if you really pay close attention to the earlier seasons, he said Wendy wanted Giselle's approval. um, And that's why when Monique and Candace had that altercation, Wendy sided with Giselle immediately. And obviously there's questions of who was right or wrong. We're not going to get into that. And Mm -hmm. then Candace said recently (laughs) that the only reason why Giselle had her side during that altercation with Monique is because she hated Monique. She never liked Candace. She just, she wanted Monique out and she used Candace as proxy to do it. And they all said, if you really pay close attention to the show, Wendy and Candace were looking for Giselle's approval. And when they didn't get it, and she was obviously so overtly, you know, um, not the nicest to them, that it hurt them. And when you see Candace cry um, when it comes to her friendships with Robin, even Giselle, it's because she really wanted their acceptance. Absolutely. I mean, we've talked about this before. Everyone who comes into Potomac, they want Giselle's acceptance. So whether you call her the Queen Bee, the Regina George of the group, whatever, for whatever reason, when people come to Potomac, we've seen it with every newbie. They want Giselle's acceptance. Even, you know, you brought up Monique. You can see her, her and Monique got off to a, a rocky start. But the moment Giselle kind of accepted Monique, Monique was all in with her, with that relationship, right? And it's, it's very obvious there's something about Giselle that people just want acceptance from. Um, except for Karen. I feel like Karen is the only one who's like, I could go either way. But I think that's because they already had a history before the show and yes. she has Giselle's number. It's like, I don't, I don't need you to accept me. Like, you know. The grand, the grand dam doesn't need anybody, all right? But, yeah, I think everybody that comes through the show wants to be accepted by Giselle for whatever reason. And it's not, you know, like, she's a beautiful woman, but they're all beautiful. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's just Giselle's attitude of, like, I, I couldn't care less about any of this. So when you meet a person who couldn't care less about anything, the one thing you want is for them to actually, like, care yeah. about you. 
Um, so maybe that's what it is, but it's something about that damn Giselle that people just want her acceptance. Um, and I understand that that could be hurtful to not have it, especially if you go from having it and then there's a fallout and, and you no longer have it. She seems so disinterested in even trying to build anything with Candace. And that could also be hurtful if Candace is on the the side of the aisle where she's like, I'm willing to forgive her. Um, but then Giselle is like, I don't really care if you forgive me or not. I don't want anything to do with you. That's hurtful. And this is just speaking as like a human being. It's not like Candace personally, Giselle personally, like that's hurtful when you want someone to like you or, you know, you want to walk in forgiveness with them and they just don't even care about it. No, but you listen, you are 100 percent right to me because this isn't us sort of recapping the season. It's more so about the psychology of Potomac. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I can say to you is two things. First, when you met Giselle, when you were my EP of the podcast and we did a Zoom interview, um, you even said to her and to me, I don't want to I don't want to speak for you. So just say what you said. No, Giselle was so nice. Like, she was so cool. She was cracking jokes. Like, she was being, like, the Giselle that we see her be on the show, that's who she was when we had her on Reality with the King. And I, I always say this, though, because people ask me, like, when, you know, they see that you have certain housewives or reality stars, what such and such mean or how were they? I'm like, everybody was nice to me, but I also recognize I'm in a, a specific position when I was your EP. They're coming into the show and I'm your EP. No one's going to be rude to the executive producer, you know, like the of the host of the show, right? Or of the mm -hmm. show. Um, so I do recognize that there was almost like a privileged position that I was sitting in to meet mm -hmm. these women. So maybe they were nicer to me than they would normally be if I was just, you know, Joe Schmo on the street or if I were one of their castmates. But I, I have found it harder to jump on the hate train of Giselle because I have met her and she wasn't this awful, evil person <laughs> that she yeah. is made out to be. I'm not saying she's a great person. I don't, I'm not saying I agree with her actions and the things she displayed because I thought her laughing at Candace crying was terribly juvenile. But I, I haven't experienced her personally to be a bad person. But that's also why I'm team Candace because I've experienced Candace more times than I've met Giselle and she's so sweet, so lovable. So supportive of just like black women doing anything that I am all often taken aback by the hate that she gets from other black women. So I'm like, if y'all knew this woman, she is she is rooting for whatever the, you're doing. Like she is such a supporter of black women. So it's always like it, it, it's a tangled web of like being in proximity with these people and then like witnessing how they are treated based on the show. It's often disconnected to me. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It is. And obviously, I have been around Giselle. We have a great rapport. Um, and that's the reason why last week I said, will the real Giselle Bryan stand up? Mm -hmm. Because the Giselle I see on the show is not the Giselle I met in person and sure. been around. Those are two different people. And that's why for me, I even tried reaching out to her to say, to give my advice, right? Because... I have to be honest to do this. And that was the one thing you said to me when we decided to um, start the podcast. Mm -hmm. Bitch, you better be honest. I'm like, I know. You're like, I know that your friend called us, but I'm like, I know it's so weird. But that was <laughs> great advice because I, listen, I have, in order for me to have the audience that I have, I have to call a spade a spade. Yeah. And, and what I do know about Giselle is, me and even Kenya Moore, we talk about how she's so cool. And it's interesting to know that there is a side of her that I do see on the show that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you that in any sort of situation, whether you're at a work or amongst your friend group, you do want to be able to have the sort of leader like you. And at the end of the day, Giselle is that leader. But when it comes to the psychology of the show that we're seeing, and, and, and I want to get your thoughts after watching the three-part reunion, the cast is so disjointed that you can tell that they were told, like, try to get along and make amends. And even Candace said 
that she was told to hold back. Mm. Did you know that? I did read that. I did read that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. When I read it, I, I didn't read it like as a quote from Candace. I read it as like someone saying that, that that's what they heard. So I was like, I don't know how true this is, but that is official. Like Candace said that out of her mouth. Yeah, she said she was told to like pretty much hold back um, because obviously if you look at the reunion and I believe this, this, this was part three, when she sort of looked off camera, said, y'all want me to make up with this? I want this show to do well. However, I am afraid of the future because I too felt that Candace was the future. And yeah. one thing I know about producing reality shows is when you have somebody who we saw all these milestones, the wedding happened. Um, the first time she was a home buyer. You know, we saw that happen. We saw glimpses of, of her being a stepmom. And we saw this journey of her wanting to have a baby. And now that she's having a baby, and I believe she is at this point 14 weeks pregnant, the fact that we're not able to see that is, is equivalent to us not being able to see Kenya Moore have a baby. Like, mm -hmm. the, it, it's just certain things where you're like, we were on this journey and we want to see this payoff. And it's unfortunate that this woman who has all this story is gone, but we have to deal with Ashley Darby. Which is the biggest fumble for me. Like, you guys like Candace walk away when she's about to have a baby, but you're keeping Ashley, who's not going to give us anything more than she's given us. If if she really is dating someone, she may she might want to give a, a dating storyline, but that doesn't even seem to be true, right? Like Ashley just doesn't seem to be very forthcoming. And I'm like, you're keeping her. You're keeping Giselle, who, like I have said multiple times, is not gonna give us more than what she gave us. That that boy she was playing with uh last season, whoever who that's is, a, that's who, who is with the um he 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 was dating some girl the whole time, allegedly. I never bought that they were dating for real anyway. Like, stop playing him up in face, okay? Stop, stop playing with me like that. <laughs> That's the extent, though, that we're going to ever get of Giselle's, like, dating life. You know what I'm saying? Like, the stuff with her, her daughters, that's always going to be, like, really good TV. But Giselle just isn't willing to give us as much. Like, we've seen Candace's, like, strain relationship with her mother. You know what I'm saying? We've We've seen, like, how that has gone back and forth and seems to be like on the up and up, right? She's shown us so much more. And I feel like she is at the point in her life where she was still ready. She would still be ready to give and we're not going to be able to see it, but we're stuck kind of with these stagnant storylines and people who are just going to wait until they get new cast members and kind of dig deeply into their lives and, and try to make things hell for them. And, and that's going to be the cycle. And that's not good for the future of Potomac. What are your thoughts on the future of Dr. Wendy? <clears throat> I'll say this. I think that Dr. Wendy's not beating the allegations of not wanting another like Nigerian girl on the show. Because as I sat and watched the reunion, I said, I, I actually... I'm actually buying into that theory now because she's th the way in the way that Giselle is so disinterested in building anything with Candace. Wendy seems the same way with NECA. Like there's no room for resolve. Like I have no desire to be cool with you. Very dismissive of her. Just kind of like paying her. the entire I mean, th the three times that NECA did say something in the reunion, <laughs> Wendy paid it. Okay. And Not I'm like, three. This <laughs> when we found out she was from Wisconsin, I'm from Wisconsin too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was very much like, I have no desire to, to be friends with this person. And I think for that reason, I was like, I don't know if I want to see anything else from Wendy. Cause that just felt icky to me. Like NECA brought it up. Like we could have been the first two like Nigerian sisters on here. They could have, they could have taken it. And Wendy was not interested in doing that and never was. And that but just, would that you do like, if somebody said your mama was a witch and practices witchcraft? I, I just don't listen. No shade. 
you talk about my mama yeah. being a witch and does this seance and all that. I don't know if I can be friends with you though, Jazz. Touche. If you talk about my mama biscuits, we <laughs> we might have to. <laughs> you're you're right, but I do like I don't know. I I think just watching the interaction, you know, when you get to a point and watch real, reality TV for so long. You start to just, we were talking about the psychology of everything. You start to just watch people's like body language and their yes. actions. And like, yeah, the aftermath of what NECA did, you shouldn't fuck with her. But I, I do, but like I said, she's not beating the allegations that she just didn't want another Nigerian person on there, period. Maybe it was personally personal about NECA, but she's not beating those allegations in my mind. I, I, I got your number, Wendy. Oh, Lord Jesus. This is interesting. I will say <laughs> this. I will say this. I feel bad for NECA, and I'm going to tell you why. To have a three-part reunion, and you are a housewife, and you only spoke three times. And 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 listen, listen, that NECA versus Wendy was honestly the, the biggest drama of the entire season. So the fact that it was reduced to a 10-minute, if that, conversation, we had three hours of television, and the biggest drama of the season was reduced to 10 minutes, I felt bad for NECA because I'm like, I don't know anything about you, sis. I know, yeah. I know nothing about you. And I was like, because of that, I want you to come back only because I'm like, let's give you another chance, maybe. But to your point, look, one thing I love about Dr. Wendy is... <laughs> You never have to worry about how she's feeling about you. So when she very much Ooh. threw Ashley under the bus and said, how about you explain it? Because you brought it up. I'm I, like, I did know, gag, yeah. Now, you know, <laughs> Ashley goes to the Sesame School, you know, Sesame Street <laughs> School, child. Ashley don't know anything but Barney <laughs> and, and and you know, and how to be a TikTok influencer. Like, mm -hmm. she doesn't have the, the level of, you know, intelligence to explain that for us, right? So when she clocked that and when she pretty much told Andy about NECA, not once but twice, um, I can coexist with her. If that wasn't a NeNe Leaks um, phrase when it came to how she used to feel about the girls, honey, um, I said hi, because NeNe would walk in, remember, in a group seat? Hi! Uh -huh. <laughs> That's it! She would do this, walk palm and do and, and run it across so she can say, <laughs> I said hi to everybody. So when Dr. Wendy said that, Technically. this is no shade. <laughs> I laugh because I say, Doc, to your point, and her body language, Dr. Wendy wants no parts of NECA. It is rumored that NECA has been fired. Do you think that's fair? Yes, because I'm very indifferent on NECA. Like, I don't care about her as like a housewife, not as a person. Um, I feel like I always have to give that disclaimer because it sounds harsh. Like I'm sure these people are fine in real yeah. life, but as a housewife, she did nothing for me. Like I, I was so disappointed in her reunion, um, like her her performance at the reunion, because there was even a point where they show her backstage and she was saying, "I got to say something." And somebody's like, "You need to, you need to say more. Otherwise, it looks like you're just watching, sweetie." You were me. We were the same. We both just sitting there spectating, watching the girls go back and forth. I probably talked more to my television than NECA talked to oh. these girls at the reunion. It was a flop of a reunion performance. And if she got fired for that, that is just the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> that's just that's just what it is. You should you that was your time. That was your time to really show up and you 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 didn't. And I I have not, I'm here for entertainment. You didn't entertain me. We can move on to the next. <laughs> Beautiful gowns though. Not Aretha. <laughs> oh, you Re that that was my girl, okay? Re was my girl. Re was my girl. Rest in peace to that queen. Yes. Oh, RIP to the queen, honey. Yes, honey. Yes, yes, yes. How do you feel about Robin being fired? Smart decision or bad one? I saw I saw it coming with with the whole like putting her 
a story about Juan behind a patron or behind a paywall. <clears throat> Smart or bad decision though. That's hard for me. Um, you know, I've historically called her Robin Paint Dry Dixon because in the beginning I felt like she like she just didn't do it for me. But I will say though, her relationship dynamic with Juan is so interesting that like that's always gonna be like a source of entertainment. I do think though, if her and Juan are really serious about being married, it was probably a good thing for their relationship because he was so checked out. But I, I I don't know. I don't know. The jury's out, the jury's out on that because I think if Giselle doesn't have a Robin next season, it's either going to be really, really good or really, really bad um, because mm. they play so well off of each other. So, like, is it good for Robin as Robin, the individual? Probably the best thing. Is it good for the show if they're keeping Giselle? I don't know. Jury's out. What about yeah, you? Listen, I think Robin being gone is going to be a wake up call to Giselle in terms of you have to foster some relationships. Mm -hmm. I can I can go another season of mm -hmm. having her and Wendy not speak to each other. I just mm -hmm. I just can't do that. Um, so Wendy is coming back because there was a rumor that she was not coming back. Um, No, she's coming back. OK. She's coming back. OK. Yeah. OK. I mean, Giselle, Wendy, Mia's coming back for sure. Ashley Darby. Yeah. Those are the only four Karen confirmed Hoover. so far. Oh, I mean, let me tell you something about Karen. Karen is what they, what the network, I think, in the production company wants Giselle to be. Yes. Like Karen is, when I think of Potomac, and if you're going to anchor someone um, on a show called The Real Housewives of Potomac, Karen has the connections. She has the intact marriage. I mean, the institution, my bad. She has the institution. She has the grown children that are doing pretty well in life. Like, she is what I think of when I think about Potomac. And, like, I'm just so shocked at how much Giselle has become the face of the show and not Karen. But Karen, Giselle, Mia. Karen, Giselle, Mia, Wendy, Ashley. Yes. Okay. That's weird. I was gonna say to say, oh my god! I, I, I go ahead. You go, <laughs> you go. You go. You go. You go. You go. That's you go. that's that's really weird to me because we know that Giselle and Ashley are locked in. They literally have a business together. Mm -hmm. They're locked in. Wendy is on an island. Her and Karen her and get along. You know, they get they get along. They're not friends. They get along. Be clear. I. We we need to know. We need to see who else. How do they round out this? In your expert opinion, go ahead. As an executive reality television producer, how do you round out this cast? You have Karen, who's like the motherly, the matriarch. You have Giselle, who's the bone collector. You have Ashley, who's the bone collector junior. Um, and you have Wendy, who is just there, kind of on an island. I yes. think I think Wendy's professional life is really interesting. If we're gonna get to see her go to the White House at some point, let's we should we should see more of that. And then you have Mia. I think going into next season, if they add no more, like let's say they kept this core five, Mia is the most interesting storyline going into the next Period. season. Period. No, I've said this um last year. Um, I told them last year to build the show around Mia because last season, Jasmine, I saw some very interesting moments in Mia's life. Not this past season, last season, the season where she threw the drink on Wendy. Um, and I, once again, I told Mia, courtesy of the podcast, how wrong she was. Um, but it was more so about her friendship with Jacqueline and her mm -hmm. relationship with Gordon. And that to me was like, no, center the show around her because we love personal story. Mm-hmm. I want this show to be centered around Mia. I agree that the network and the production company probably want Giselle to give what Karen gives. Because at the end of the day, Karen does give off the impression that she wants things to be cohesive. Mm -hmm. And Giselle, as beautiful as she is, and as funny mm -hmm. and witty as she is, and shady, mm -hmm. right? Um, was missing from the Neely, was missing from the Nene Leakes University. Of, of reality television 
is at the end of the day, you have to be somebody to rally the troops when you're the face of the show. You yeah. have to be. You have mm -hmm. to be somebody who could come in and try to do it the way Kyle Richards does it, right? On Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. She gets mm -hmm. into with the girls, but fundamentally, she tries to get all the girls together. And having this cast of Ashley, Giselle, Wendy, Karen, and Mia is weird. Um, mm -hmm. Is really bad. Ashley should be dropped. Um, mm -hmm. And again, Ashley is a great person. It's, I'm not judging these women as human beings. I'm judging them, what you said, off of being a reality star. And I want people to understand that. I'm judging you off of being a reality star. Like we judge actors for their acting role, not who sure. what they do at home on a Tuesday watching Steve Harvey show. Like we're judging you based on your performance. And I don't want to see Wendy and Giselle not speak. Um, I think the only way this train can move forward, we have to see Wendy and Giselle have a conversation, did it. I just don't think Giselle has the reach to have a real conversation with Wendy that means something. We saw her try to deal with Monique. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember thinking to myself, this is so fake. And the moment they had Monique and Candace had that altercation, that was the that was the one thing Giselle said, baby, that's all it took for me to go back and not messing with you. And I'm gonna drive this bus all the way over your ass. Yeah. Again, the the remaining housewives, the jury's still on whoever they they decide to cast to to round them out. But the remain the remaining five is really a testament to like what I have been feeling is that Potomac has lost the plot of like what it was originally supposed to be. I think they either go all in with women who are like Karen, closer to Karen and Giselle's age, like kind of in that same like life experience, or they just go, they skew around like the Ashleys and the the Candaces, right? For some reason, this city in particular has not done a good job at just like meshing those two like kind of age groups together, right? It feels like Ashley and Candace, NECA at her in there, like they are great housewife. Well, Candace um, is a great housewife, but they also haven't had like a whole lot of life experience for it to feel genuine when they are with like a Karen or a Giselle, right? Which is why Karen often is coming off as more uh, like the mother mm -hmm. to these women as opposed to just like we're all cast members right Giselle comes off like the really mean big sister that everybody like it's like I my sister my big sister's so mean I just want her to like let me go hang out with you and your friends right <laughs> mama said you gotta take me too right but yes! it, it, it feels, you know what I'm saying like it feels like that because they just haven't found like a natural way to like blend these worlds together and I just don't see them recovering or becoming like a really good show next season with this core five. And I don't know if it even matters who they use to round it out. There's something about this cast that just isn't connecting. Like there's something about them. And dare I say, let them do a season without Giselle and see if things change. Maybe Giselle is the reason. No. And I think that's a fair question to ask is Giselle holding the show back. I think that's a fair question to ask. I will say this without her having her sidekick with her um, is going to be a big test to see what I saw in this three part reunion is what you saw too. And she could care less about these girls. You know, I think when it comes to Karen is a history there and they listen, they're both in on the joke. Like the audience sure. likes us, our playful nature so we'll give you that. But I think what's missing is the depthness of their friendship. And that's what's missing. We saw with Nini and Cynthia, right? Mm -hmm. Nini and Portia, Nini mm -hmm. and Kenya. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, we and, and I hate keep bringing up, you know, Atlanta, but I'm only bringing it up to say it's what you said. Has Potomac lost the plot? Yeah. Um, is Giselle holding the show back? And I think those are fair questions to ask. So raindrops, let me and Jasmine know. Uh, Y'all can read her, honey. I'm, <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. You, can't, you, can't, you can't read me because I'm in such a confused place. I want to say that, right? Like, 
some of some of the things I've said have like co- contradicted like my feelings in the past, but it's because I am just as confused as I feel like the network and production are with where to go with this show. Like I'm confused as a viewer because I'm like, I don't know how to feel now. I'm not excited about the next season. I stopped watching this season. I stopped watching last season, right? It's like they always get me. Like I will come back for the first first couple of episodes. And then there's somewhere where I'm just like, I don't like this. And that is that is how it's remained for me for like the last two or three seasons. I get to a point and I'm like, I actually don't like what I'm seeing on TV. It's not entertaining to me anymore. It's 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 maddening at some points. Like it's triggering for some people, right? Like it's just not a good entertaining show. Like I'm watching Summer House Martha's Vineyard right now. And like they have petty drama too, but something about it, I'm just like, it doesn't feel so deep. Like it doesn't no. feel so deep that like at the end of this, they they will never speak to each other again and it's on site when they see each other. Like I feel like with Potomac, like there are relationships there that can never ever be repaired. Like you see them and it's two ships passing in the night. Right. Like it just feels not it doesn't feel good. It's not feel good TV. I don't like it. I'm not. I, I don't know. Yeah. No, I think what you brought up with Summer House Martha's Vineyard is true, because even when you see like Preston and Bria have a moment or Jasmine um, and the girls um, on that show, it's lighthearted. And mm-hmm. even the whole thing with Nick and is he is he weird? Is he a creep? Is he touching? Right. It's, it's like real healthy conversations. But they're able to move past it because it's not that deep. And I think, listen, I think some of those girls in Potomac are too busy trying to make TV instead mm-hmm. of just be themselves. And I, sure. and I think I think that's going to be the 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 issue with the show. But listen, raindrops. Let Jazz and I know on the Q and A on Spotify podcast. Tweet us hashtag in reality with the King. Is Giselle holding back? The Real Housewives of Potomac. And Janelle, that's his name that loves yes. Giselle. Don't, don't be mad at me. <laughs> I know that's your fave. I know that's that. But we just asking a question. We just journalists trying to get to the bottom of it. Hey, Portia. Yeah, so Mr. Gobadia Bryant, you be nice <laughs> to my girl. But I want to hear from you, Janelle. Let us know as, as, <laughs> let us know as well. <laughs> Jasmine, it's been a pleasure, my sweet pea. Okay. I know you're a private person, so say what you want to say, honey. But if the girls, honey, want to support you and anything you're doing or follow you on social media, let them know how and where. There's two ways you can support me that would be huge and mean so much. One, I am developing a series. Me and my Emmy-winning friend, Santana, we're developing a show called Camp Inner Child. And it is all about a group of burned out 30 something uh, year old women. We're going to send them to camp for a week, see if they can reconnect with their inner child. Um, we're doing some focus groups. So if you want to be a part of the focus group, go to campinnerchild.com and then you can like sign up for the email list. We'll send out emails when we're going to do the focus groups. Um, and it's amazing. The second thing is a personal project. It's a book that I wrote. I'm on like, it needs to be edited, but it's going to come out at some point this year. It's called This Box is Too Small and it's all about the multi-hyphenate journey. Matter of fact, I'm going to send, Wendy, I'm going to send you a book because it's all about people who just have multiple passions and it's called This Box is Too Small. So if you really want to uh, cop the book when it comes out, you want to just join the community of multi-hyphenates, go to thisboxistoosmall.com and then you can also sign up for the email list there. And those are my two things. And I'm on all socials as J. Henley Brown, but I'm I'm private on the socials right now because um, that's just where I am with my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, period, period. No, listen, every, every, listen, I think everybody should do a social media fast. Um, It's funny. Again, she and I haven't talked about this. I'm on one too. I, I, I'm not logging on as much. I obviously post to promote what I got to promote, but, and I engage every once, you know, not every once in a while. I'm not saying that. I engage with my range jobs if I drop a video and they tell me they like yeah. it. Yeah. But I, I, I think it's healthy to take a social media fast for your mental health and, uh, I- I'm proud of you for doing that. And you know, you have supporter you. in me. So I know that. I yeah. know that. They yeah. can't tell me nothing about Mr. Carlos King. You always support me in whatever I do. Yes. Well, I love you, sis. And I love you too. we can't wait this long anymore to not know. have you back. So let's just say I will see you soon. Okay. See you soon. Thanks, baby. <laughs>